Well, welcome back guys. This is gonna be the last episode in our series on the 66A Model A Deluxe Pickup. Right now I'm doing the final tuning on it. It needs a little bit more road time before I get it really settled in, but we're gonna take this truck out and we're gonna do a bunch of driving. We're gonna talk a little bit about the interior, how we got the pinstripe laid down on this thing since I'm not a pinstriper, and a few things like that, but we're gonna get it out, listen to it, drive it, see how it goes, and all of that. And some of you might have been wondering, of all the engines around here that I dyno, no dyno results for this. Well, the truth of the matter is, I put a Model A one time on my Stefska SX211 1600 horsepower dyno, and um, may I say that things did not go well. Matter of fact, it broke my dyno. There was something wrong with it. I had to redo all the software and everything else trying to dyno a 40 horsepower engine. So it simply does not work. So in this one, we knew it was gonna run. We just decided we're just gonna do all the tuning in the car. So that's what we did. So without further ado, let's get to work. This is a really cool riveting tool that came out of the Boeing plant. I bought it on eBay. It does the most beautiful riveting I've ever seen. And I like to put these rivets in after I paint and polish everything because everything is nice and straight and smooth. And you can do an exact pressure so you don't squish the paint. And it comes out perfect. A little paint. Voila. Perfection. Well, my weapon of choice to put this cab on was the forklift with the set of extensions. It works really neat, really nice. I take my time in putting it down because if you scratch this semi-gloss paint, you can't rub it out. So you can't even touch it. A little extra time, things work out well. Well, I used the same weapon to set this box onto the frame as I used for the cab, and it worked out pretty well. I came in, stabbed it in there, and then slowly lowered it down because, of course, it wraps around the cab and ties into the cab. So it was just a heck of a lot of back and forth. These fenders were probably the nicest fenders I've ever seen on a Model A. I mentioned that in another video, and it is so true. So all I did is sand them down, reshoot them, put them right back on the car. 
But once I get the cab on, tied down, box on, tied all together, now it's time to finish all the stuff under the hood, the firewall, put the coil on, put my original seamed gas line on, and I also have an original seamed um, vacuum line, and I uh, return plated those, that hot lead dip look, they came out absolutely brilliant. The floorboards I had for this truck were original, so I just sanded them down, re-did uh, the black on them, put the welting around the edges with the black tacks, just like it's supposed to be, and started putting together all the floorboards, the foot rest, you know, you name it. I had to make the rivets for the floorboard reinforcing straps. You can't buy the right size diameter rivet with the right size head, so I just made them. These rubber floor mats have really improved over the years. They used to be pure garbage, but they're pretty nice now. I made a pattern, cut the floor mat to fit, and it went in beautifully. Very nice product that they're putting out now. Well, this is the black duck cloth material in the top. I just started putting everything back in it. The dash on this called for the type that does not have the line around the, the instruments, so I made sure I got all that right. Started putting all the details together, um, so it was really no big deal. The hardest thing I had in this whole interior was original door window riser handles. It was just a bear to find those things, so um, evidently they're drying up. The judging standards calls for a black, brown, two-tone, cross copper grain artificial leather. Well, this is the interior that was in the truck when I got it, and it was done probably five, eight years ago. And I went to find that material today and couldn't find it. So I had no choice in that I had to put the interior back in it. So the seats, door panels, kick panels, and all that is what I took out of it. So it really didn't do much there. I would have liked to replace it to make it perfect, but um, can't find it. The one really good thing about this truck was is that it has the original nails for the door panels and above the header and uh, all of that. I had all those original fasteners, and so I restored them, and I put them all back in, and I think they look spectacular. This truck has an original perfect steering wheel, not one crack. Yeah, try to go find one of those nowadays. As I mentioned in a previous video, I really did not want to de-skin this box. I really like the way that they did the inside of this, although be it, it's probably not original. Uh, they call for a commercial green to be inside of these boxes. Never seen the color. And then the other thing is, is that I've seen pictures, different pictures, original Ford Archives photos and whatnot, of these trucks where it doesn't look green. It looks different than that. It almost looks like it could have been body color. So it's up in the air. I have no idea what it's supposed to be. I like the stained boards with the black runners, so I just left it.
There were a couple of boards that were still original in this truck bed, and one of them is the very back cross member, and the other one is the very forward cross member, along with some other pieces that were up front that you don't even get to see. So I wanted to leave all that original. Now my truck, my tail lamp bracket is exactly what the judging standard says is original, but I've seen other trucks where they have a different bracket that hangs the tail light much further toward the tailgate. I don't know what's right, but this one has a part number on it and it matches the judging standard, so I was happy. The way I like to restore these cars is I try to get every part restored, done, put on the shelf, ready for assembly. Then when most all the parts are done, then I come along and just assemble the vehicle. And this one worked out beautiful because it was a complete truck to start with, although I had to catch up on a lot of stuff that was wrong, and I had to collect up tons of parts that were ruined or not correct. It was a short period of time, thanks to Steve at Burst Model A, it was probably four or five months I had collected up all the pieces for this truck. And another big shout out and thanks to Dan Bixby who helped me with so many original beautiful parts on this thing. Uh, what a godsend and a great friend Dan is to help me out with all this stuff. And because of those guys, this truck went together much easier than it would have without them. Well, of course, all these Model A's had this bug in the windshield, and the commercial vehicles just had the Ford with the triple X and the oval, but the passenger cars had a date. So I found this guy on eBay selling a kit. Absolutely brilliant. Worked out beautiful. They, they come out absolutely perfect. Highly recommend them. Check on eBay. You'll find that guy, and he sells you a really neat kit to do this. Well, the question came up in my mind is, how am I going to pinstripe this truck? I'm not a pinstriper. And I had the same pinstriper for 40 some years. But we got into a big pissing match over Donald Trump's taxes and I told him to go pound sand and get a life. So, that shot me in the foot. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna lay a pinstripe, a nice pinstripe on this truck. So I did a little research and I found this. This is called the striper, not the stripper, the striper. When I got on the website, I saw a pretty blonde. I thought I was going to get into something that was going to pollute my computer. But no, actually, the striper tape worked brilliantly. Originally, the Model A's call for a 332 pinstripe, and that's the stuff that I ordered. But in retrospect, I think I would have ordered one just a hair narrower. Now, if I had any criticism of this pinstripe at all, it would be it's too good, it's too straight, it's too perfect. But what are you going to do? This stuff is a snap. You lay down this tape on here and then you pull the center out and then you take a regular pinstriping brush with regular one-shot lettering enamel, add a little bit of varnish to it. That was a secret that my old pinstriper used. And I laid down the stripe with a regular pinstriping brush. It immediately pulled the tape off. And that paint on the edges lays down really nice. So when you feel it, it feels like it was just done freehand and all that. It looks like it. It's the same enamel. Again, my only criticism is a little too perfect. But if you're in a bind, 
Try these guys, the Striper. I highly recommend it. When we finally had a nice enough day here in Colorado, we could get the Model A out, run it around a little bit, and show you guys how Model A works, in case you don't own one. Starts really hard. Well, for those of you who don't have a Model A, let's take a quick walk through the cockpit. We'll identify some of this stuff. Here is the clutch pedal, the brake pedal, and up against the firewall here, that little pedal is the starter button. The accelerator pedal here, foot rest next to it, which does work. We have a standard H pattern transmission in this. So right here is a neutral position. So we go over to the left and up for reverse, first, back through neutral, up to the right is second, and then finally third is below that. Then on the dash here, it has a pop-out switch, so it makes contact when the little cylinder pops out at you. The gas gauge, because of course that tank in front of you is the gas tank. Speedometer, odometer, got a whopping 16 miles on it. And then the amp meter to the right of that. Can't get any more simple than that. On the steering column, we've got the uh, spark lever on the left. Start it in the up position, move it down as you're running. On the right is the gas adjuster, and what that does is it just moves the accelerator pedal down. So if you want a high idle to get it warmed up or whatever, or you got a long hill, you don't want to push your foot on that pedal, just um, pull that lever down and let her ride. Model A cruise control. Light lever is parking lights on the left, dim and bright on the right, and then we've got the horn button in the middle, and that's a about it for that and then over here is the choke so that's the lever that goes down connects to the carburetor so you would uh, pull it out to choke the car and then to turn that is enriching or leaning your gas mixture and right here we have the emergency brake lever so there we have it let's go drive well Model A was a really nice design compared to a Model T, which had kind of a convoluted automatic transmission. Well, it's just straightforward. Clutch, brake, gas, standard H pattern transmission, but no synchromesh. So the only trick to drive in these Model A's is timing, mostly for second gear. I teach my kids how to drive in a Model A. That's how simple these things are. rated at 40 horsepower um, we're standard bore probably is going to be putting out about that so the only issue is 6400 feet elevations where we at so we're gonna lose about 30% of that so down to 28 horsepower tons of power no not really adequate power sure works just fine now if you can master the double clutch brake drums. This thing breaks so nice that it's just nothing to it. You let the RPM come down just right, slides into gear. It's 
the only trick to driving a bottle of the doggone transmission. See how we do going up this hill here. Pull this hill at 30 miles an hour. Good enough. We're not going to drive this thing around the country. We're going to drive it to go get ice cream. Which is really what it's for. Power performance is adequate, I'll say. Overwhelming? No. Adequate? Yeah. Made Henry Ford the richest man in the world. The Model T and Model A. Now look how slow I gotta go in order to get this thing to go in gear. Three miles an hour. But you can shift it absolutely perfect. All about timing. Engine RPM, speed. Ask any over the road trucker. It can't be done. So there it is, guys. Simple, light, agile, and a whole lot of fun. This truck just keeps getting better and better. The more I drive it, the better it gets. Got a little hiccup there. Listen to that. My squeak went away. Well, that pretty much wraps up our series on the 1931 Model A 66A Deluxe Pickup. I really appreciate you guys watching. I had a lot of fun doing it. We may get it out there and show it a little bit in an exhibition or something like that. I don't care to judge it. You guys are my judges. I just want to make you guys happy and hopefully uh, you got a little bit of entertainment and a little escape from reality. Well, next up, I'm very happy to announce we're going to bring you the 1935 Auburn Boat Tail Speedster. That car is a really special car and we did uh, quite a restoration on it. It's number 10 body number 10 so it has some special things about it we're going to go through the lineage of these speedsters because we're also restoring a 32 12 cylinder right now so we'll show you how they evolved and all of that so that's coming up next stay tuned thanks for watching